Hello friends and thank you for joining us virtually for an online evening we are calling Christmas from the Archbishop's residence. It's our kind of fireside chat. This year, the pandemic is changing the way we get together and how we mark this season. But what hasn't changed is how much our sense of greater community and your support mean to our ministries and parishes here in the Archdiocese of Chicago. And we certainly want to celebrate that. I make my home at the rectory of Holy Name Cathedral. Tonight, it is appropriate that we are gathering here, even if virtually, at the official Archbishop's residence of the Archdiocese on the near north side. Like many of your homes, it's spruced up for the season. Built in 1885, the residence has been named a structure of significance by the National Register of Historic Places. Over the years, its overnight guests have included President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Pope John Paul II, and Mother Cabrini. If you count them from the rooftop, you will find 19 chimneys, though only three are working. We've lit a welcoming fire in one of them now. Before we begin our evening of music and reflection, let's start with a prayer. Gather us together, Lord, in the house of your love and our hope, uniting us, even if we must stand apart. Keep us mindful, as St. Francis and Pope Francis have told us, that we are fratelli tutti, all brothers and sisters to each other in your Son born among us. Beyond the darkness of winter days, beyond the shadows of illness, beyond the uncertainties of our times, pour into our hearts a joyful expectation and confident hope in knowing that Jesus continues to come anew in our lives, breaking through our vulnerabilities, sinfulness, and weaknesses to draw us closer to you and to each other. Like our Mother Mary, may we treasure in our hearts the great things that you have done for us and call us to do for the least of our brothers and sisters and for the renewal of your church. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Highlighting our celebrations tonight are our good friends Rich Daniels and Dean Rolando from the City Lights Orchestra. We are physically distanced, but not socially distanced here in the residence. So let's listen in as they bring us some joyous sounds of the season.
Music makes this time of the year so special. And during this pandemic, many of our music ministries and school choirs have found creative and high-tech ways to safely raise their voices in song. We are so proud to feature a number of them tonight. Just as integral as music is to our holiday celebrations, so too is some great food. Our diverse parishes throughout the Archdiocese have traditionally shared holiday treats, a tradition continuing at home this year. I don't know if I should say thank you to my sister, but she shared this photo from one of our childhood Christmas celebrations. I grew up in a Croatian home and Christmas was ushered in with plate after plate of kiflitsa, crescent-shaped almond cookies with powdered sugar. St. Henry Church in West Rogers Park has a strong Vietnamese community. Parishioners there tell us their holiday meals usually include all sorts of roasted meats. For example, roast pork, duck, or chicken. Chicago is proud to boast one of the world's largest Polish populations outside of Poland. Numerous churches often invite parishioners to share a piece of makowiak, or Polish poppy seed roll, with a cup of coffee. Hispanic families on Christmas Eve 
make room for a warm bowl of red pasoli, a Mexican stew with shredded pork in a chili broth. We're lucky enough in the Archdiocese to have many priests who aren't shy to share their talents in the kitchen. One of them lives with me at Holy Name Cathedral Rectory. Many of you already know Father Luke Camelli. He's such a good cook that he should have his own TV show. I'm just lucky enough occasionally to be his sous chef, which means I have to do the dishes. He's been working his magic over the stove to share one of his favorite Italian Christmas recipes. Let's see what he's cooking up. Well, I like to think I'm uh, a decent cook, yes. Yeah, there's a cathedral gala. One of the centerpieces of the live auction was a dinner that was auctioned off. Last year, we had two dinners auctioned off, each one for $50,000. Amazing, just amazing. Take good care of me, I'm your golden calf. My family, all four grandparents, came basically from the same town in the Marche region of, of Italy. We had relatives in Corona, New York, who would every uh, Christmas time send, and this is so interesting, a barrel of fish, a, a huge barrel of fish. And that was a huge thing for our, our Christmas Eve celebration. Today I'm gonna make uh, bucatini, spaghetti, with a little hole in it, al tonno, in a tuna fish uh, sauce. This pasta, one of the most wonderful things about it is that it's very quick and easy. So bucatini is a, a pasta, spaghetti, but it has a little hole. That's buca, uh, bucatini, a little hole in the pasta to capture the sauce. It starts simply with some olive oil, uh, in, a, in, a, in a pan. What, what happens is you keep layering different ingredients. Onions are sauteed for a while and softened a bit. Just takes a couple of minutes. Then you add the tuna fish. And, and this is important. It has to be Italian tuna fish uh, packed in olive oil. You break up the tuna fish and add some salt, but not too much and then add some minced garlic to that. And then to this add two small anchovies. And sometimes people say, oh, anchovies, no, no. Well, anchovies are actually pretty important because they melt into the, the sauce. Add then some capers and it gives a little bit of a, a, a briny taste and then add a dash of wine or white vermouth. And that pulls things together. And then after that, tomato sauce. Out of a can, that's fine. Um, and then this is all stirred. You allow it to simmer and voila, that's the sauce. Pretty easy and really very tasty. There are layers of flavor. And uh, while it sounds very simple, you know, pasta with tuna fish uh, sauce, there, there's, there's a complexity about it. In the process of cooking, everything smelled so good and looked so good that as soon as it was ready, I wanted to dive in and start eating. But I've learned it's much better to just let it sit maybe for a minute or two, let the sauce settle in and uh, let it just, not cool, but let it just, the temperature go down just a bit and then eat it and enjoy it and it will be wonderful.
Our thanks again to Rich and Dean. And I'm also grateful to the staff of our communications office and stewardship and development team. We want to also offer a special thanks to all of you joining us tonight. In this pandemic, the needs of our communities and our neighborhoods have grown exponentially, and you have helped the Archdiocese meet that challenge. You know, the calls to the Catholic Charities Homelessness Prevention Call Center have increased by 40%. Requests for food assistance have doubled. That's just a tiny snapshot of the need. Your generosity has helped us raise an historic $20 million for COVID-19 relief efforts, but the need is still growing. To date, 40,000 families have been served by our nine area food pantries and additional pop-up pantry locations hosted at local parishes. Your prayers and generosity are making a big difference. If you would like to make an additional donation at this time that will help your parish individually to continue its vital ministries, you can do so by logging on to www.archchicago.org slash Christmas gift. There is also a link in the description box below. Your parish communities very much appreciate your support, and so do I. Roughly over 50,000 students are educated in the schools of the Archdiocese. Often this time of year, the birth of our Lord is remembered with an evening of lessons and carols. These are scenes from last year's Lessons and Carols at Pope John XXIII School in Evanston. Here are a few more examples of how our schools and parishes are keeping the music playing virtually this year.
My genuine hope is that this holiday season finds each of you happy, safe, and healthy. Like tonight, not all of us will be able to gather in person with the friends and family that we love, but that doesn't stop us from connecting as believers who have a deep spiritual connection as members of the body of Christ. Our Lord, born on Christmas, reminding us where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there. Thanks to modern technology, we can gather in his name miles apart to celebrate the good news. But let's also keep each other close in prayer. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. May you have a blessed Merry Christmas in this holy season. God bless you all. Thank you.